Hmm. Hello, my people. This is Expressive Tone TV, conveying your thoughts and feelings to the world. Guys, hey. Dele Faro Timi, the human rights activist, that our very sound lawyer has killed it again. He said he was not expecting anything better from the Supreme Court. According to him, he said the rule of law has been destroyed in this country. Nothing matters anymore. Character does not matter. Nothing matters. You can lie about everything and also become the president or a leader in Nigeria. According to him, that they have completely destroyed the 1999 constitution, which is guiding, you know, the rulership of the country. So he said, for you to just become a president or anything in this country, it's just for you to get a Yakubu, the INEC chairman. If you get a character like that and the INEC, results can be announced in the night. Anything can happen. Please, I will want you to hear him out. But before then, subscribe to my channel if you have not. Press the notification bell, like the video, and also share the video. It is good for us to see all these things. Because for him, he said, he thinks it's a revolution that we change this country. There needs to be a revolution. And he also tried to define the kind of revolution that he's talking about. Please watch video. I will see you in my next video. Church. He simply just told us that the law does not matter in Nigeria. It is the formal enthronement of feudal impunity in Nigeria. That is what it is. It simply means that uh, nothing matters. All you have to do is find a Yakubu sat at INEC. And uh, magic can happen at INEC. And once that magic happens, the Yakubu will tell you, after announcing the result of the presidential election based on some abracadabra, oh. he can tell you, in the middle of the night, by the way, he can simply tell you with surprise, shock, while others have said, claimed victory. What's your reaction, sir? I don't do reactions. I have absolutely no reactions. Are you disappointed? Of course I'm not. I expected no less from the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court did exactly as I expected that it would, and that I was announced that it would. I don't know exactly what anyone is supposed to be reacting to. Some Nigerians were optimistic that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. You yourself had had a measure of optimism in your, one of your recent interviews, uh, hoping that the Supreme Court will do the right thing. I said, you can never rule out magic. If you notice, I said, you can never rule out magic. I didn't even use the word miracle. Because if I had said miracle, we would have been based on faith. Mm. And, um, of course, faith is substantiated, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, I said magic, abracadabra, because um, I had no such illusions. So You had no such illusions. And that, if I may ask, uh, how does this judgment impact the political landscape of the country at this time? He simply just told us that the law does not matter in Nigeria. It is the formal enthronement of feudal impunity in Nigeria. That is what it is. It simply means that uh, nothing matters. Your provenance does not matter. Your character does not matter. Nothing matters. All you have to do is find a Yakubu sat at INEC and uh, magic can happen at INEC and once that magic happens, the Yakubu will tell you after announcing the 
result of the presidential election based on some abracadabra, oh. you can tell you, in the middle of the night, by the way, you can simply tell you which mind-blowing <laughs> impunity go to court. Because he knows that the court you're going to would find some reasons oh. by which to validate the criminal actions that he has engaged in. You know, there is this funny proverb of the Yoruba. He says, Ilutiko Sofi, Eshe Osinibe. You know, when you translate, you will tend to suggest that the Yoruba mindset has the capacity to envision or imagine a place ungoverned by laws. Nothing can be further from the truth. The Yorubas have very rigid systems of customs, taboos, laws, traditions, norms, cultures, multiple sets of guidelines by which we live. So the Yoruba mindset, the worldview, couldn't have been talking about a place where the law does not exist. So Ilutiko Sofin is not a place where the law does not exist. It's a place where the law does not rule. That is what the Yoruba law proverb oh. was saying and is saying. And this is what we have now achieved as a people. There are no sins, no infractions in a place ungoverned by law. It is the impunity of men that govern such places. And that is what we have today. There is nothing I'm going to say today that I haven't said for years. In fact, I was graciously reminded this morning of an interview I granted you years back, where I had said that as we will go through the electoral process, we will use the opportunity to awaken the Nigerian people to let them see the commonalities of their afflictions. And that eventually, the Nigerian system must resist the demand for change. And that having resisted that demand for change, it will expose itself to the people. I remember, I believe I was sat in this same chair, and you were in that same chair on the day. And I went on to tell you that by the time we would have gone through the judicial process, we would have been new dead the Nigerian judiciary, that the Nigerian people will be able to see clearly that what is meant to be the last hope of the common man is completely hopeless in giving any hope to the common man. Whatever I might have had to say, I believe Justice Datijo said everything eloquently. And God bless him. So there is really nothing left to say about that Supreme Court. Without going into the key arguments and uh, the technicalities, uh, questions are being raised as to the preparation of the opposition parties themselves. I mean, I'm talking about the lawyers of the opposition party, that is the PDP lawyers and uh, the Labour Party lawyers, uh, in terms of their preparedness. In fact, uh, uh, Chief Robert Clark uh, SAN, uh, said with regard to the judgment that the PDP has no point at all. They did not do their homework before coming to the court. And in referring to the LP, he said the Labour Party never won the election on any ground. Uh, if I may ask, sir, how will you say that the opposition party lawyers were not actually prepared? You know, the beauty of the Nigerian space is that they bring out these old men who would ordinarily have gone to their graves with honor, and then they bring them out to help to perpetuate the 
narrative yeah. that they would prefer to put in the public space. So you would look at somebody like Chief Clark, erudite man, old, weak, distinguished lawyer, and you would expect that he would speak to the truth. But of course, he would prefer that we focus on the technicalities. That is the narrative that the system, of which he has been an eminent member for decades, so, and we see what they have built. We see the judiciary that they have built with their lives and their exertions. So they will prefer that we have an argument about how much prepared we would have been and how much better the system would have fared if these lawyers were to be the equals of the almighty chief Olani Kweku, the one, uh, the, the, the uh, in, in, com incomparable Latif Fagbemi SAN, whom even the Honorable Justice Odili was waxing lyrical about, who eventually, of course, is now a Honorable Attorney General. Of course, you would have had to bring this team of lawyers from where? Togo? Uh, oh, okay, I forgot. We probably might have found such lawyers if we had gone to Ghana. And of course, we would have imported the justices from Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> Look, Justice Dan, uh, Chief Clark can spin this all he cares. And um, he can speak all the Dogon Turenchi he cares to speak from now till kingdom comes. We know how justice smells or stinks. <laughs> so, please. In your opinion, sir, how, how do you think the Supreme Court's judgment will shape the perception of the judiciary's independence and integrity? See, Gomez, you're forcing me into a dissection of the past. And that past is gone. The illusion, the illusion of the judiciary as the last hope of the common man in Nigeria has been irredeemably lost. I said before the Supreme Court judgment that the existing constitutional order would have been destroyed by the time the Supreme Court finds the grace to legitimize the presidency of the man known as Bola Ahmed Tinobo. It has found the grace to do exactly that. Now, because of that singular decision or action, what has happened is that it has set multiple precedents that the system, our court system is found on the doctrine of stare decisis, the hierarchy of courts. What the Supreme Court has established are clear. The lawyers who are still in practice can distill the case law. It is an illusion to believe that the judiciary does not make law. It does make law in reality because where there are ambiguities as to what the lawmakers might have intended, mm. then the judiciary is required to interpret, which eventually is a way of them making law. But this is not one of those situations. This is a situation where the Supreme Court threw away multiple precedents, decisions of the same court, and where it has now set multiple precedents that it would have to begin to overturn. I don't understand exactly how it plans to deal with the mess that it has created. And frankly speaking, it's none of my business. As